Today, our research software engineer at Yarno will demonstrate taking some code and extracting it out from another library and publishing it on PyPI, the Python package index. So this is basically a common-ish thing we do. It's also common to do most of the steps, but not publish it, but it can be installed through a repository directly. But anyway, this is hopefully a quick demo of something that basically works so you can follow the steps along later. Is that a correct introduction? Yeah, um, so that's what we'll be doing. And it's um, it's essentially all the steps in um, creating an open source publication in, in Python, um, except writing the actual code. So I, I thought it's a really good example because um, it shows shows everything you need to know um, except the stuff that I cannot know. So, um, Should we get started? Uh, um, I will share my screen. There we go. Okay, that's the right desktop. Okay, so I'm, I'm sharing my whole screen. So let me know if the font is too small. Can I even increase the font in this? Oh, well. <laughs> um, so I made a really rough plan and you can add questions and um, add things into the plan as we go, but it's not going to be visible most of the time. I will maybe take a quick look. But the first part is um, to quickly take a look at the code that we already have and and then from there, um, decide what we're going to do. Um, so I will go to the actual repository. Did you see my screen before this moment? No, now I first see it. Okay, so it took a while to share it. I'll actually show the thing I, I told you I was showing because I guess you didn't see it. So, I mean, it, it's not a very detailed plan, but there's some notes here and we can add stuff as we go. Yeah, okay. Okay, so just a, um, I already explained quickly the plan, um, I guess. So actually let's follow the plan. And um, look, so the first thing is a quick look at the code and then um, what do we actually need to publish it? So we can think through the steps and um, start a repository and add, um, add what we need. So I'll use VS Code to open this folder and it opens on the wrong screen. Here we are. And the file that was, there are a lot of files here. This is a big project that has a specific purpose. Um, and the specific purpose importantly is not handling email and um, handling this big uh, email inbox files. So one thing we want to do with this project is though to be able to open specifically um, email inbox files that are exported from Google um, and do some processing, like create some sort of condensed view of email activity from that file. And for that, we need to be able to read the email inbox. That's not at all core functionality here in this project, but it is a useful thing you can do. Uh, there is um, a Python package called email, which we're using, but there's some things that um, we need to do that go beyond what email can do directly. So this is this small bit of code, this one single file that does what we need. Some parsing um, email addresses in a list, um, so this is a, a a string that is a comma separated list of email addresses, and we want the actual email address, not the name, for example, that often is contained in the string. And this is just for opening and reading specifically the um, Google's version of an a mailbox file. So there's there is a standard, but the standard is very open, and there's differences between inbox files. So basically, um, this one file is what you'd like to split out to yeah, another this is, because yeah. it's useful alone. So this is 
kind of generally possibly useful for others, and it is definitely not core functionality for this um, software that we are looking at. Okay, so to do that, what's the first thing? So we need to publish it somewhere, of course. We need to put the code somewhere. This is already on GitHub, this code. So we are using GitHub. Um, so that it just, the code itself will be public somewhere. Um, and we'll need a license and we'll need some documentation or at least a readme. It's a very short, um, a relatively small uh, package. So a readme is enough. Um, what else do we need? Um, we can of course see what comes to mind as we go. Probably dependencies, right? Dependencies, all the project metadata. Yeah, so Arrange what are the metadata? Citations. Portable. CFF file. Um, I think these are the most important part. We um, they didn't show it, but we do have tests for this um, email reader. So we will include those in the repository. Okay, well, let's go ahead and let's go to GitHub. And for the recording, I hope I don't need to log in. I don't. And I'll, so this is the way I would now recommend actually starting. So if you go to whatever online thing you want to publish your code in and create a new repository rather than creating a repository on your laptop and then like pushing it to this uh, online thing because now you don't have to worry about initializing an empty repository. So um, what should we call it? Um, because email is already a Python package and it's uh, this is more specific than that. It's something like email utilities or... Google take out email or something. Well, whatever. I guess this can yeah, be changed works. later yeah. until it's published. A reader and some utilities for... The email inbox in. Now I'm actually starting to think um, in Google Takeout. So Google Takeout comes as a zip file and uh, we do read the zip file in the code, but not in this file that I'm thinking of exporting. Um, so this is for reading files directly or files that have already been opened with zip file, but it would actually be good, a good idea to add the ability to read the email directly from this Google Takeout zip file but we're not doing it now. So it's missing a feature that I think is useful. Um, let's add a git ignore template for Python. This is super useful um, if you don't have to worry about files. And uh, already here it's asking for, or you can choose a license. And um, I want to use the MIT license. I wrote the whole thing, so it's not, um, I don't need to think that much about what the license is, but let me still just quickly check what the license is in this original. It is MIT. So definitely taking something from published in MIT and publishing it as MIT is fine. Um, so let's go create a repository. Okay, so here we have a small-ish, um, well, a very small uh, initial repository. I'll create a new terminal and clone it. So this is the address. Whoops. Here we are. And open it. So now I will be copying a bunch of stuff from one place to another. So I'll have two windows side by side. Let's start with the readme. Um, we have this little bit of um, little bit of a common text here that explains what this file does. And since the file will be the entire package, this is now um, essentially the contents of the readme file. Oh, I don't actually want to edit the original repository here. Okay, and probably. I want to take out these underscores here and make it a proper 
um, title. Let's say this is enough for now. Um, it could contain examples of how to use it and um, it could tell you how to, there's nothing specific about installing it, but how to run tests, for example. But that's also just PyTest, so we'll get to that. Um, but let's say that the readme is enough for now. Now in this file itself, I will create a new file. So this is a Python package that only contains one file. Um, so you could still create a new folder and create an init file and create the, uh, put the contents in, um, well, you need a separate files or a single file. Um, the simplest way is to just create a file. Um, a Python file like this. And now when you install this package, this um, Python file can be imported directly. Okay, so, whoops, I did not copy this. So close that. Okay, so we'll need two packages, um, email and regular expressions. And I think neither one needs to be installed. Both of them are in the, so that would be, you can find out from looking at requirements. Yeah, so both packages exist by the, or are in the default Python installation. So we don't actually have any uh, requirements, any dependencies for this. And then I'll just pick up the code from here. At least I think that it doesn't have any dependencies, but we'll see. There is at least one dependency that we will add in a moment, and that's PyTest but that's only for development. Okay. So that's the main package. Now, what else do we need to do here? I guess let's go to the tests. Oh, well, let's actually first um, add the oh. readme uh, committed to the repository, sorry. Yeah, making the initial commit. Or, or oh yeah, commit, so is there? Yeah, there is an initial here. commit because it came from uh, GitHub. Yeah. So, okay, so first you're committing the README update. Yeah. And then I'm. Oh, it shows. Interesting. Okay, this is new for me. Um, uh, it's just incoming okay. and outgoing, so you can. Yeah. I have changes that are not on. Uh, in the online repository. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Google take out email. And this is just the entire file. So yeah. Mm. And I guess you've made this entire file yourself. So there, yeah, I did. No other I mean, it is published as MIT. So that's not actually um, a concern here anyway. But mm -hmm. um, I did write the whole file myself. Yeah. I mean, of course, often that can be a an important thing to check. Like you need to ask all the authors before publishing stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, okay. So now we have all the basics. Um, we still cannot actually, we, we can import this and we should probably check um, that all of those imports are real. So um, that they are actually in this, uh, the base Python package. So to do that, what I will do, and you can do this in many ways. In fact, there are probably these days better ways that I haven't learned yet. I will use Conda to create a new environment. Um, let's just use the name of the folder. activated and what I will need to install is pip because I want to install dependencies through pip. Um, in the end, we will be publishing this on PyPy. So um, okay, so just to be want... sort of self-contained, everything, all the dependencies come from pip or from PyPy. Yeah. Uh, pip is the tool for installing things from PyPy. Yeah. 
and PyPy so, so. is the Python package index. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we'll get to that. So um, now we have pip. I'm on one hand assuming that most of these things are familiar to anyone using Python, but on the other hand, it, it's always good to mention mine. So um, we are using the right pip. This is um, something that you have to do with Conda. You have to check that you have uh -huh. actually have con pip in the Conda environment. Mm -hmm. um, let, I don't have any dependencies listed, so I'm not going to use pip to install anything. I will just mm -hmm. run Python and try to import um, tab completion doesn't work because I'm not using IPython. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, okay so seems to work. Testing it interactively. Yeah. So can you Mailbox reader actually start it? Um, of course, it's Google takeout email dot mailbox reader, and mm -hmm. it's a class. Yeah. And you would initialize it. Yeah. So you need to give it actually a file handle to a mailbox file or a string that is a file name. Mm -hmm. Test file okay. doesn't exist, so yeah. it will give me a, an error. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, right, that's good. Then the next thing is that we need to create these tests. Mm -hmm. So I, get, I will put them in a separate folder, even though there is only one test file. So mm -hmm. tests. Yeah. So in this original code, there is a fo folder called tests with a bunch of subfolders, and here is the test email. Uh huh. And you are so you already have the tests also. Uh yes. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, let's create a new file. Test. Google take out email. Mm -hmm. .py. Here we're importing OS. Um. So this mm -hmm. config file, this is the name is the package that this comes from. Mm -hmm. um, so this just tells where the test, um, where the a test mailbox file is. So okay. we'll need to change that. Yeah, I guess you need to embed the test data. Yeah. Indeed. So we need yeah. So we need to also move the test data into the package. This is a complication I didn't actually properly prepare for, but we'll have something to. Uh, refer to. So the main thing I guess here is most of these things I don't know how to do by heart. I will actually refer to something. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just like me. I mean. Yes. Yeah. That's the way you should be doing. <laughs> um, almost every time I make a new project, I find a recent one that is similar and yeah, copy it. Copy it from myself. So now if I directly import Google takeout email, that assumes that I have used pip to install it on my system before I run the tests. Mm -hmm. So another option would be to um, actually do, can, well, like you, you could go like down a level and import it from there, but I think um, this is common practice and it works. It just requires that you have it actually pip installed this package. Okay, so we actually do need a new folder called data or test data. Mm -hmm. Should it be in the test folder? Mm, I guess it makes sense. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. It's also easier to write out the path. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's... Okay, so I will simplify the name. So this is actually the name um, of the mailbox file in the Google takeout. So mm -hmm. I will slightly simplify it. Um, so we actually need os.join. Oh, we are using os.join. Um, this is the function we are calling here is os.join to get the path correctly. So. The folder is test data and the file is test.mbox. Here, on the other hand, where is this test mailbox file here? So this is um, a, this is a test file. 
this is what the mailbox file looks like. Here's the content of the body of the message, and here's some um, metadata fields, like sender and who is it from, uh, who is it to, when was it received, all of that. Yes, it looks a lot like standard email stuff. Yeah. And it's all just text. Yeah. Okay. So now we have the mailbox file and we have the test. And it will try to read uh, from that file. Now we do need to install some a dependency, but this is a development dependency. So I guess I will call it requirements dev.txt. Mm -hmm. Just write down the dependencies. And um, it is always useful to write down all the dependencies anyway. So this is PyTest. Here is a dependency. And here we find the, um, the terminal window. So we, in fact, should install PyTest into this environment. Whoops, pip install PyTest, not just pip PyTest. <clears throat> okay, here we are. And now I think if I just run PyTest, things and things will not work <laughs> because I haven't installed this package, right? Mm -hmm. I also cannot install it yet because I didn't make it a Python package yet. Uh, okay. So, so let's go there next. Um, actually, yeah, commit this stuff first. Uh, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, tests and test data. Let's just push them already. Okay, so again, I guess, why not use this as reference? In fact, this is something I didn't write, I will tell you, because this is something Richard wrote. <laughs> um, and but I will not I copy can... this directly because yeah. this is not actually quite exactly what we want to do. Yeah. Um, I will just use it as reference. So to make a Python package, should we actually do it the modern way and Maybe. not use setup.py, but use a TOML file? Yeah, I can find. Do you have an example to copy from? That I yours? I have written those. While you're looking, I can explain the background. So what okay. we saw in the old code was a setup.py file, which is probably many years old. It's the old way of storing or of declaring package metadata. It's executable Python code, which makes problems because you can't execute it until you have stuff installed already. The new method is a file called pyproject.toml, and it declaratively defines all the same things you see as here. So basically what you need, like but it both declares what the build system is and the properties of the project. Okay, I'm unfortunately still looking. I guess I should just come uh, find the I, documentation rather than an example. I have a copy I can paste into the Zoom uh, chat. Okay, thanks. Okay, there. That's the chat. Now it's open on my shared screen. Oh, okay. So I guess I'll directly copy this and make changes. Yeah, it's made as a... Oh, it, it is an example. Okay. Yeah, it's from my own templates. Okay, so we need to create a pyproject.toml and I've made a spelling error here. High project dot toml. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's just look through this. So this is using flit um, to actually build the package. A module name. I guess we have now started using Google takeout email, which is fine. Um, is pip named the same? So I guess I'm assuming this is what you, so you type pip install and this name. Yes. So yeah, I prefer if it's the same 
but people sometimes use a different name. So this is yeah. what you import. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Yeah. I like, guess. Yeah. And yeah. this is the name that you install. And this will also be, be the auto detected, yeah. but anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's better okay. if it's like okay. Authors. Authors. And you can also give an email in there, but I've never done that. Yeah, I generally do, but um it would be an email field like Oh, it's okay. This is uh, I'll check. Giving my work email here is not a problem because um, I'm already using it in the example or in the test data. Um, yeah, so it is email just like that. Yeah. Read okay. me at MD. So license the way file is good license. The yes. Pi project file works is it automatically get or the way Flit works is it automatically gets most of the metadata from the repository itself okay so i guess we don't need most of these fields dependent so i, I wonder if it finds dependencies directly but we don't have dependencies it's an empty yeah. list right yeah. now we will so, actually require a zip file once um mm -hmm. i've like mm -hmm. changed it so, so that it can open the zip file directly but yeah. i'm not doing that now so, so right now it's 33 minutes past the hour. So maybe we will yeah, get okay, that so, part. Yeah, we will not do that today. Um, and in, in any case, the point is not to write the code here. The point is to publish the package. Yeah. So this is, we don't have a script here. So we'll just get rid of that part. But here you could, um, you could add a script that you can execute directly from the terminal um, so that you don't have to import in Python. So that's a useful thing to take a look at. Um, yeah, option dependencies test, and then a pi test. We don't have well, we have a repository URL, I guess. Um, not the separate documentation URL. And the repository URL is somewhere here. Um, okay, here we are. Nope, not that one. Did I close it? Okay, that was the quickest way to find it. <laughs> okay, so it's github.com, but this is not how it works. It's name and then. Yeah, within the L, so. yes. Okay. Okay. Then there's some information here of how to build it and how to push it or how to publish it. Yeah, that's some. We will need that in a moment. But now, since we have this, we should be able to pip install dot. Well, the dot is okay. this folder. So, mm. okay, mm. that did not work. No doc string. Um, Can you go down? I thought I saw. Please add a doc string to the module. So it automatically gets something from the module. Oh, OK. String. So I guess copy the same thing from before. Um, OK, so this is the this is the module. Yeah, and this and needs a doc string. It needs a doc string, and that, I guess, it should be on top of the file. or Probably, I guess. If it's automatically detecting it, then I assume it needs to be in a standard place. Yeah. Let's try this way. Right. No. Uh, need version. So. OK. So version is not defined anywhere right now. And it should be defined somewhere. So is there a place it, in the? It should be defined in the module itself. So in Google, take out okay. email.py. So, so it needs to be version, version. equals. Uh, so we define a variable directly in the in yes. this, um, and we will call it zero point zero point one. Yeah, <laughs> like I usually do. Yeah. Hey. Okay. okay. So, so now works. we have it installed. Great. I guess and... we can point out that where we are now, 
this is even useful if you never publish it to PyPI. So you have something which yeah. is now self-contained and you can install it yourself and you can install it from GitHub, which yeah. makes it easier to use things across different projects without setting Python path and so on. So just there is one more one small step before that. So uh, add my dot string and version to the module. So I mean we need to push it to GitHub before we can install it from GitHub. But um, well, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we uh, sync the changes. Now everything's in on, on GitHub. And now, in, yeah, in principle, we could, instead of pip install dot, we could write the repository URL here. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's git plus the URL with HTTPS. Yes. And then it will install it from the repository. So you don't actually need to put it on PyPy mm -hmm. to install it from a remote. Um, and really, but, most of the time, yeah. I don't, if it's just for me or yeah. I don't expect it to have a big audience. Yeah. So I, I guess in this case, I don't really expect it to have a huge audience, but still, um, yeah. why not? Uh, like pushing stuff to PyPy is also not a big step. It's, um, it might be useful. But it's true also, I often I would not do this next step um, if I, unless I want someone to be able to conveniently install the package without having to type in a long URL or copy it from somewhere. So that is the main purpose of PyPy, uh, the, the package index. You can just type pip install package name and you get the package. Yeah. Okay. So um, I have actually not used Flit before, but your... Um, yeah, it basically this, this template had um, instructions on how to do it. So yeah, we could even open the. Um, and actually, with Pi Project I've hardly ever used Flit directly. No. Oh, okay. I've basically always installed it, and it's happened in the background. And the uploading, yeah. I haven't done. That much. Yeah, okay. If you don't upload, then you don't need to run Flit. Yeah. Okay, so, but in order to build it, do we actually need to install Flit? I suppose uh, we do, because I cannot just run it from here. Yeah, if you... I could use app to install it, Flit? No, or it's probably available Flit from not, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess it's... Uh... Must be in flit or in pip. It, it's not a built in library, but neither is twine, which is like the mm. previous option for pushing to PyPy. So it, it, this is just not a thing that's built into Python itself. Yeah. So you need to install it separately. But now we have it. So we can, it tells us conveniently what we can do with it. So we can flit build. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, it doesn't, so the URL I wrote here doesn't start with HTTPS or HTTP. Mm -hmm. So it's not an actual URL. Yeah. Oh, so okay. that should be better. Um, oh, HTTPS. Let's try again. Okay, okay. So now built. Fleet, sorry. It built. Yeah. Now Fleet agrees with me and everything is fine. So it, it actually checks the metadata in this, uh, Tomo file, which is great. Um, so it, it just checks that you didn't make like, weird spelling mistakes and things make sense. Okay, so what do we have now? We have this dist folder in our project. Um, and dist folder contains, like, essentially in, in this case, like a wheel file, which is the way you install Python packages and then a tarred version of the basically the Python code, because mm -hmm. we only have Python code. We are not actually building any C code or anything. This is relatively straightforward. Um, so this will work with any Python tree, basically. Um, okay. I didn't actually, yeah, I, I didn't require any specific Python version here, but it actually does only work with Python tree, I think. Um, Okay, but yeah, 
So now we have a build version of it. Um, and we can push that, publish that on PyPy. So this command will push it to test PyPy. Um, most likely this will fail because I'm not logged in. Okay, so it's looking for how to log in. And there is no test PyPy logging information. So now I have to remind myself how to do this. <clears throat> okay, so this there should be a pi pi rc file that stores um your username and password. Although it didn't ask me so i guess i have that file maybe i should check for that file without showing you the uh, username and password i have oh but i don't have one okay so i'm slightly confused about why it's failing instead of just asking me for the username and password but i can whoops i don't that one so I can set the username and password here. Can you give it the URL on the command line instead of the test PI instead of the name? Uh so the full URL to the yeah. uh to test PyPy. Pi. I... Okay, yeah. so it's here. Oh actually here's an example of the PyPy Pi RC. So mm -hmm. it should give you user it should you should ask add your username and the URL there. And, I've uh, somehow, somehow always remembered it, remembered it prompting me directly. So yeah, test. Okay, so it does want the yeah. So the the thing is, it it will prompt you for a password in any case, yeah. but you, I guess you need to create a PyPy RC file, and it needs to list list all possible servers. Then it needs to define an um. The username defined here is, of course, not my username. So I will quickly check it on the other screen. OK. I'm also copying the password in case. So the username is what I often use. It's my GitHub username as well. So it's not exactly private information. Test PyPy um, directly. Oh. Um, I didn't want to copy this because I had already copied the password to PyPy, but fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not used to how Vim works because I've been using code for a while. Okay, and let's save it. So now it knows where test PyPy is and also where um, normal PyPy is. And we should be able to call it this way. And now it asks for the password. I'm not sure that I have a password for test PyPy. Let's see if this, no, this doesn't work. Um, username password authentication is no longer supported. Migrate to API tokens. Maybe we can stop here and leave it. Yes. At, like, okay, so you would be here. You could upload it to PyPy following yes. different things. You've made the package yourself. Yeah. So um, and yeah, I, I do this rarely enough that I always have to. Um, yeah. I always have to check, but I kind of did want to 
show it until the end um, or to get the package on PyPy, although that's not the most important part. Um, so here's instructions on uploading packages from PyPy itself. And this is what we should follow to actually get it to work. Or um, Fleet pro probably has updated instructions, but these instructions don't seem to work. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I... So to to figure that part out, um, will take a bit more. Although I I think actually like doing it with just uploading with Twine is just one command. Yeah. Um, if we can figure out how the API keys work. But before we go there, there was a change in the Py project. So fix URL in pyproject.toml. We are running out of time and we did all the important parts. So I guess one more important thing is to take a look at the repository again on GitHub. So my repositories or, okay, let's um, look for it. Um, so, no, oh, come on. Okay, here we are. So here is my new package. And yeah, this contains everything we need to install the package and to run the tests. So I guess we didn't quite do that yet. Did we? Okay, so we can run the tests. Um, okay. So yeah, they don't quite work, which is understandable. Um, so, I mean, I'm wondering, should we summarize now? There's a lot more debugging to do, but we've got 10 minutes. So yeah. let's not forget the main, like, or what someone would be most interested in. So here we did the license documentation dependencies. This is all somehow linked through well, both in the repository and also declared in the pyproject.toml file. Yeah. Citations. You want to comment on the citations some? Okay, we didn't create a citations file yet. So this is a way, especially so and also this is maybe not um this is more of a utility project. But if someone uses your code specifically to um I mean to in some um scientific publication, for example, um they should be able to cite your code. Right, because it is a it is a uh, scientific output, like kind of like a paper. So um, the citations.cff file um, tells how you cite a project. I can show an example of one relatively quickly. So this would be. Now I find the list of repositories. Somehow I didn't previously find it. Um, did we move it? Okay, sorry. How did I, okay, how did I not find it? Um, right, so here's an example of a citation.cff file. This is also a Python project. Um, and it lists essentially, well, um, a message, uh, please cite this software as below, and then lists the authors and you can add a DOI, which you have from, from Zenodo, and a URL to the publication, the software. 
Um, and importantly, you can also cite things here. So if you um, if you use something, uh, if you use a scientific publication or software that you can cite, um, you can then list them below in this file. And um, there's tools for tracking citations using this, including in GitHub itself. So that's just useful for um, for you, of course, to track citations to your project, but also it's important for others when they use your code for doing some uh, science, they can then actually cite your work. It kind of allows them to use it for a, in a scientific publication. Okay. Um, so we didn't quite get it on PyPy, but that's um, the that only makes it slightly easier to install. Um... Do you want to demonstrate installing from GitHub with the URL? Yeah, and that's maybe a that's idea. a good ending point. That's yeah. The I actually usually end. I actually just thought about something. We didn't quite add the data file into the package yet and that is why the tests are not working so adding a data file to the package is something that you don't of you sometimes need to do but most of the time not and that's a separate issue um so this is the google takeout email so what i'm looking for is the um, url correct url to the repository and now we can install it from pip uh, using install it with pip. So pip install as usual. And then we say git plus and then the HTTPS address. Mm -hmm. I often make a mistake here, but I think this is correct. Let's see. Looks good. Okay, so it clones. Okay, so yeah. So it first clones um, the Git repository. Oh, here it says cloning. And then well, it does some filtering of the branches and also it doesn't want all of the data, but the important thing that is it's getting the repository from uh, online. And then it's following as usual to installing dependencies, getting requirements to building a wheel file and then installing it and getting metadata. So this is exactly the same thing that happens if you install from PyPy. So if you type pip install numpy, um, it just gets the file from a different location. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you have to specify the full URL here too, yeah. so that it knows the location. Okay, well, is yeah. there anything else to comment uh, before we go? Um, yeah, it would so, be nice to, pop, yeah, um, to get it to PyPy and to get the data stuff to work, but that would have taken more than an hour. Yeah, so, I mean, we focused on the yeah. important parts. We can have yeah. the people can look at the repo later for the full thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, so yeah. I have shown the URL, but let's actually copy the URL here. And this is basically, like, basically, this is not that hard. So if, yeah, you that's the main thing. The code yourself, you can easily find a uh, Pi project toml file, copy it, make it yeah. semi installable, and add stuff later. And I really do this for most of my projects these days. Yeah. So for license, we just selected it when creating the repository. Um, and there's some differences, but it's they're not huge anyway. Um, well, read me a documentation is a part that you have to write yourself, but it is a, only a, it is a description of the project. Of you just describe what you're doing. Um, some examples are nice, of course. Um, listing dependencies is maybe the well. It's something you should do anyway because it is very useful. Um, but it is kind of also the thing that. Um, that is non-trivial here. Then citations, uh, which I showed. Um, so you can copy a template again from anywhere. Um, 
and tests are in their Python functions. So there's nothing that, nothing especially intimidating here. And it only took us an hour to do the main steps. Yeah, Maybe in another like 10 minutes or so, we could add the data file to correct place. And in another 10 minutes or so, we could figure out how PyPy has changed so that Fleet no longer works uh, as instructed. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. that, that stuff happens. So, um, okay. Yeah. So, that, those are the important parts. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. And yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks. We'll update the repository and video description with anything that's been missing. Yeah. Okay. With that, bye. Bye. Hello. So we are back uh, later in the afternoon, and we will finish the demo now that we've figured it out. It yeah. wasn't that hard. Anyway, Yarno, yeah. so now we will try to complete the publishing to test PyPI. Yeah. So there were two issues. One was the data file, and the other one was that uh, publishing didn't work uh, as it seemed from the documentation. So. Uh, I figured both things out. So for the data file, we don't actually need to have it in the package because we will only use it for testing. And when you're running the tests, you will uh, clone to repository. So we will just have the data file in the repository. The problem was that this is not the correct path, depending on where you're running the test from. Um, this is not the path to the data file if you're running it from the, like the um, main folder of the repository but we'll make it even better than that um, because we can get the uh, full path uh, to the test uh, folder because so um, i just copied this from uh, my notes but i will quickly explain so this file means well this current file the file containing these test functions uh, we take the absolute path to it and then we take the directory name of that, which gives us the full path to the uh, folder where the tests are. And then we just join it here in the beginning. Um, so now we have the directory where the tests are. And from there, we go to this test data folder. And there we take the mailbox file. So yeah, a, a little bit complicated, but um, we always get the correct file, no matter where we are on the file system. And that, in fact, did work the last time I tried. So the tests run correctly now. I run PyTest, and there's three tests that it runs, and they all work. So that's one thing. Um, the other one is then publishing it. So um, right, OK, so that is a example of what the PyPy RC file should look like. Um, so what? Uh, what I needed to do is go to the uh, pypy.org and test.pypy.org separately, and for both of them, create a uh, an API token. And then authentication happens so that uh, the password is the token that you generate, and the username is this underscore token. Um, so it, it looks similar to before, but really what you need is the this authentication token. I'm not 100% sure what the <laughs> purpose of the change is, but um, uh, it is more secure with the token. It just, um, you could change the structure of the file to make it clearer. But in any case, this is what it looks like. So I just close that example. That was of course an example because um, I'm not showing my actual token uh, here. So otherwise there's no change. And we can go to the uh, terminal and run um, fleet publish. So in fact, um, let's find the, yes. So fleet publish repository test PyPy. Oh, great, a new one. Um, Oh, so Flit wants you to have everything tracked with Git, so there's no risk of 
unintended stuff being published. Okay, so what is it? Com like if, if what is it saying? It's not tracked. The bottom one. Can you do get status and maybe? Uh, okay. Oh, it, it is actually complaining uh, probably about this uh, example file that I created. Okay. This pi. So this is not yeah. the real PyPy RC file. This is the example I just showed you. So let's just remove it and try again. Okay. Okay. So now it works. Um, so we already ran. Um, Lit build. So I will come back to that error in a second. We already done fleet build, everything's fine. Um, and then you run fleet publish. It is now complaining because the file already exists. Mm. Um, I have already uploaded it. I can probably get around this um, and, and this demonstrate because... this by up, updating the version number. Yes. So let's do fleet build. Okay, fine. Split build, publish. Okay. Um, and now to publish in actual PyPy, you just remove this part. So just split publish and it goes to the actual uh, Python package index. Here we go. Okay. And now that it's in the actual Python package index, you can install it with um, so pip install package name, and it worked. Oh, so now we upgraded yeah. from oh already satisfied point oh so so yeah it's I didn't ask it to upgrade so. it just it is already installed yeah yeah. All right, so that is everything. Now, it the project does have a its own page on PyPy if you want to take a look. Yeah. This is maybe the last interesting thing um, to demonstrate. So all of this information comes from the Tomo file uh, and the readme. So it found the readme in the repository. Um, and in the Tomo file, it has a uh, the URL to the GitHub page. Um, well, this is my PyPy uh, account, but authors are listed here, license is here. So it found the license file and so on. So yeah, it, it's relatively smart. It, it found a lot of things uh, just from the files in the project. But yeah, so there it is. Um, people can now install this package and use it. Yeah, and I guess all our other talking was done before, so thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks.